from the depth instant tutorial. Well, nothing is quite like decimating your enemies without them even noticing you fired a shot. Well, so let's make a fat, big cluster torpedo because we can. Now, huge missiles is probably the most expensive weapon in this game. I'm not sure about that, but it's really expensive. So we want to have some built-in protection when we do this as a prefab. And it's smart to do this um, as we go right now. So anyways, what you need to do is to go to missile section. Under missile section, you can select, uh, you know, small, medium, large and huge. We will go with the huge missiles. And as you can see, they are indeed pretty huge. So plop one down there. And here we're going to go with the huge gantry. The huge gantry only connects to this side of it. We go with about 11 modules. We also want a huge hatch because, you know, they need to be protected. So now we can go and set up some other parts here, like the controller. Plop down a missile controller, a friend or foe identifier, quite important and just a little bit of connector. And now we need a way to control this weapon. And of course we need to have a local weapon controller connected up to a wireless receiver, just like that. Uh, it can also be a smart idea to have a couple of ejectors onto this thing so that it will uh, fly out smoothly. And we are just going to set up the local weapon controllers real quick. Here we can see we have an altitude bracket you want to have the max altitude to around as high as you would imagine your missiles can jump, which is not very high. And then we have signature type, filter on none. So we can filter this on sonar, because these torpedoes will seek using sonar. So if we shoot at a target that can't be seen by sonar, the missiles won't hit anyways, which is why we do this. Filter signature type on sonar and add a sonar to your system. All right, and then we go in here and say the required accuracy before fire will be 180 degrees. So let's set up this main missile. Now the thruster part will be a torpedo propeller. Then we'll need to have at least one fin. Then we also want to have a one turn. It's quite nice to have that. And we also want to have a fuel tank. And then we're going to go with some fancy stuff. Here we can see cluster controller. The cluster controller allows us to hold missiles. Adding cluster extensions will make the space for uh, the missiles we can store here bigger. So we'll have a three module one there. All right, then we have some parts left. And of course the cone, nose cone part will be the torpedo sonar. Then we of course want to have, you know, a couple of explosives so that it itself does some damage. And lastly, we want to have a ballast tank, because we want to make it float under water. Now, if you can see the stats here, the lifetime is 160 seconds, really long. Uh, the water thrust duration is a little bit lower, but it's still one and a half minutes, so I think it will be decent enough. So if you want to increase the speed, we can increase it like a little bit here, so it's like 90 seconds flat and a little bit faster, just like that. I'd usually turn off thrust before locking to like 25%, you can do that. And since this is insane, we want the arming delay of the warheads to be like at least 5 seconds, because this causes a huge boom. Uh, default guidance is C skimming. We can set this to uh, straight line. Uh, if you go to the ballast tank, we click on the ballast tank, and here we can see float depth. We will make this float at a depth of around 30 meters so that it will be safe from uh, some uh, anti missile systems. Here we click on the cluster controller. So we can make him release its uh, missiles up in distance to target and 400 meters as it is is pretty good. But this one distance to target if it's uh, increasing since the missiles we are carrying will be faster. It's smart to make uh, them release if the distance to target is increasing. 
So we want to set it if it's uh, you know from around 700 meters probably we can uh, hit him with our missiles we carry if they happen to try and run away from us. So this is smart to set there. And here we have drop stagger so we can make um, not fire all at once and we'll set this to 0 0.1. All right, and that should be everything we need to set up uh, as for now. And the free space we can uh, leave it for uh, fuel, but you can change it to something else as well. And if you have several launch pads with this thing, you copy it to all. You can see that container length, two meter per module, uh, three modules. So six meter is the maximum length of the missiles we can fit in there. So our total volume is 4.712 meter cubed. You actually need to write this down in a calculator to uh, save yourself some impossible math. All right, so the cluster missiles I will carry in this one is medium missiles. So uh, select the size of your choice and, well, have one of these. I'm actually gonna change my layout a little bit there and we're going to make the test little missile there. So we just hook it up to the same missile controller like this um, and we're going to make a little test missile and then we're going to copy it uh, how many we now want to have and we'll see about that. So if we go in here now we have three modules and if we go to utility and just quickly add a cluster ejector, you can see that required container length is three meter. So medium missiles, you can see three, four, five, six. Now this should be the maximum length of missile, a medium missile we can fit inside this thing. It really makes a lot of sense. All right, so set up the carry missile. Torpedo propeller, we are going to have two fins. We're going to have APN guidance. We're of course going to have the torpedo sonar. Adding a cluster ejector part will make this stop being a normal weapon and instead make it a, a thing that's get loaded into the bigger missile. So that's important. It can be smart to have a signal processor on there to filter out decoys. And then we of course need a lot of explosives. And of course a couple of fuel tanks because I uh, forgot that, great. So uh, here we can see max speed in water, like that. Lifetime 40 seconds, uh, water thrust duration is 115, and it's completely wasted. So we go to the um, thruster and we just max it out and they're kind of uh, ish similar. So now this will be decently quick, very nice. I just realized we only need one fuel tank and uh, now we're happy with this missile, so uh, that's super nice. And we can go and look at uh, container volume required. Down here under cluster munition, you have the second value. The space we have to fill is 4.712 and we need to divide this by 0 0.295 and uh, we get the value that's uh, roughly 16. Very nice. So in order to fill our cluster container, we need 16 of these guys. All right, seven like that. And we just prefab this and one, two, three, four times four, that's 16, fantastic. Now we'll just need to hook them all up like this with this little surface. And the direction the cluster missiles uh, ammunition is uh, orientated, it doesn't matter. And just to make sure this is the right missile, we exactly want it like this. We copy all matching launch pads and that should be that. All right, just armor it up a little bit and it should be good to go. So let's test this thing. All right, and there it goes. All right, and they warm up the target and the big missile hits, fantastic. Oh, you're kidding me. No way. No. Wasted resources. Here comes another one. Missiles are released. Tor small torpedoes released. And there we go. Oh, yes. Beautiful. And there it is. It's very expensive to use cluster missiles because you need a lot of launchers, but they can also be quite powerful. But they use a huge amount of materials to reload this thing, so watch out. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Check out my other Insta tutorials or normal tutorials and I'll see you next time. This is your host, Jim Desm, signing out.